Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the workers' training tonight. We pray, Lord, you speak to every heart and you grant us the grace, the vigilance, the determination to be obedient to your word in all conditions of life in Jesus' name. We pray that nothing will hinder us, nothing from within us, nothing around us, and nothing away from us, far away. We pray, Lord, that you grant us the sharp eyes of a consecrated, dedicated, visionary believer, so that your word, your will, your way, the commission will always be in front of us to obey and to carry out in Jesus' name. Keep us awake all the time. Awake to our duty. Awake to our responsibility. Awake to the calling that you have given us. And we pray that nothing, persecution, opposition, criticism, conflict, confrontation, nothing will hinder us from doing your will every moment, every minute, all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we're coming to Acts chapter 5 verse 17. It says in verse 17, then the high priest rose up, and all day that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. Verse 18, it says, and they laid hand their hands on, on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Verse 19, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said in verse 20, go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, saying, did not we strictly command you that he should not preach, teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. In verse 29, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to be God rather than men. Verse 42. In verse 42, and daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to preach, to teach, and preach Jesus Christ. They cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Our topic tonight, preaching without ceasing, despite ceaseless persecution. Preaching without ceasing, without stopping, without letting up, without going or preaching. Preaching without ceasing, preaching every day, preaching every time, preaching at every opportunity, preaching in our communities and preaching around our homes, preaching on the field and preaching in the church, preaching without ceasing. Satan would like to make you cease and society would like to make you stop. And the things around you And the things you are thinking about And the things you go through And the things that confront you Will make you want you to stop to cease. But as we pray without ceasing, we preach without ceasing. We teach the word without ceasing. Despite 
ceaseless persecution there will be persecution some of the persecution will be with the word of mouth some of the persecution will be slander some of the persecution will be criticism some of the persecution will be cutting words that will cut you down some of the persecution will be the words of the mouth that will pierce your heart and make you to say why am i preaching am i going to go through that again and why am i going to keep on lifting up christ and preaching christ and preaching salvation and going to the people and helping the people to understand the way of salvation persecution by word of mouth persecution by slander persecution by criticism persecution by action persecution that may hurt your body that may hurt your life persecution by action that may affect your job that may affect anything and everything around you and yet in spite of despite of despite the persecution some of the persecution you may be used to they've done it before they're doing it again it's okay i'm used to that they've never done it some things are new and because they're new they pinch you and punch you and pierce you all the same whether they are common persecution or common persecution whether the the habitual persecution or occasional persecution whether you feel the pain or you don't feel the pain so much whatever the level and whatever the side and whatever the persecution is coming from persecution coming from trusted people persecution coming from familiar people persecution coming from people you don't even know you've never met them but they know you and they know what you're doing whatever the persecution ceaseless persecution a kind of persecution that comes from all directions and yet you understand that he that will live godly and preach godliness and preach the gospel must suffer persecution because of that your commitment and your consecration is that you preach without ceasing despite ceaseless persecution and daily in the temple rainy day sunny day and daily in the temple hot days and cloudy days and daily in the temple days that things are all right and days that things are not all right days you have something to eat and days you don't have anything to eat daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and to preach jesus christ think about yourself have you been like that since you were born again have you been like that since you became a worker have you been like that since you heard about the glorious gospel and since you heard about the great commission will you say daily in the temple and in every house you cease not to teach and preach jesus we need to wake up so that the calling we have we commit ourselves we consecrate ourselves to everything the lord has called us to in the great commission so that by the grace of god you'll be able to say i've not ceased i didn't stop whatever came and whatever did not come i did not cease preaching despite my ceaseless persecution we're looking at three points here number one the compelling command of the angel from heaven so important was the great commission and so important was the preaching of the gospel that an angel was sent from heaven and told them go don't sit back don't hide don't run away go stand don't wobble don't sit down don't feel tired stand and speak and speak this word of life to everyone point number one the compelling command of the angel from heaven number two their courageous coordination with addiction to harvesting it was like they were addicted to it 
harvesting souls and bringing them out of the field where they are being wasted. If they are not harvested in good time, if they are not brought into the kingdom in good time, they waste up. They waste their lives and they will be wasted for all eternity in hell. Therefore, all the apostles coordinated themselves together, branded themselves together. All the apostles, they came together with the same zeal, the same force and the same vision. The, the courageous coordination with addiction to harvesting. Number three, the con constant commitment every day, constant commitment every chance they had, constant commitment anywhere there was a sinner, anywhere there was somebody who had not received the gospel, they had that constant commi commitment of the apostles of holiness these are apostles that went out to tell the people how to move them from their haughtiness and from their pride how to move them from their hypocrisy and move them to holiness so they can get them to heaven the constant commitment of the apostles of holiness let's come to number one number one the compelling command of the angel from heaven we're looking at uh, verse uh, at verse 19 it says in, uh, in verse 19 but the angel of the lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth the opening of the prison doors why so they can go and stand and speak the word of life the opening of the prison is not i am released I am healed, I am free, and because of that, I'll take holiday, I'll take vacation. The angel came to release me so I can go and rest. No, the purpose of the release, and the purpose of the miracle, and the purpose of being let out of prison is revealed in verse 20. It says in verse 20, it says, go, stand and speak in the temple to the people to the people that means the people themselves will come and they will come early and they came early and the apostles found them there and they spoke to the people and they spread to the people all the words of this life words of eternal life it's the word of a regeneration the word of salvation the word that brought them out of death spiritual death and brought them into life spiritual life three things we're looking at here number one go number two stand number three speak number one go liberating souls with the gospel of god the gospel go the gospel go you cannot say you have the gospel if you are not going because the word gospel starts with go and so if you have the gospel if you possess the gospel you must go liberating souls with the gospel of god number two stand lifting up the standard if you're going to stand you must have the standard and you are standing with the standard of the watch of god the standard of the will of god the standard of how the people will live when they are born again you stand because you have the standard you stand because you are keeping the standard you stand because you are living with the standard you stand because you are devoted you are consecrated you are committed and you sacrifice everything you pay the price to keep the standard if you are not uh, having the standard living by the standard going for the standard there's no point to say you are standing the word stand is the beginning of standard standard you cannot write standard until you've written the word stand so if you're going to stand you're standing for you're standing with you're standing by the standard and then it says speak you speak leading all to the salvation 
of God. That's why you are speaking. There's no point speaking if you are going to talk only morals. If you are going to talk current affairs, anybody can do that. An angel doesn't have to come from heaven and tell you to speak. If all you are speaking is politics, if all you are speaking is social affairs, if all you are speaking is things mundane, if all you are speaking is something temporal and not something eternal, an angel does not have to come and tell you speak if all you're speaking is gossip an angel doesn't need to come if all you're speaking is slander an angel doesn't want to come if all you're speaking is cutting down your neighbor an angel doesn't have to come and do that an angel comes and he tells you to speak because you have the word of salvation you have the word that will take people on earth to that heaven where the angel came from that's why he came Aim to say speak leading all to the salvation of God let's look at number one number one is go like British souls with the gospel of God we're told in Mark chapter 16 reading from verse 15 it's and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that's what christ said if any angel comes from heaven he will say if he's coming from heaven if he's coming from christ if he's coming from the lord he will say exactly what christ has said any angel that comes to you angel from heaven angel of a man angel in anywhere angel in the dream and tells you anything if it's different from what Christ has said if it's different from what our Savior our Lord had commanded and commissioned us that angel is coming from the pit I will not listen to him but when the angel comes and he says exactly what Christ has said whether it comes to us in the day or it comes to us in the night and he says exactly what Christ has said that's when we listen and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel when you go you go with the gospel you go with the good news you go with the glad tidings and preach the gospel to every creature every creature some of those creatures are in dangerous places some of those creatures are in a kind of secluded places some of those uh, creatures they are in a forbidden religion some of those uh, creatures are in places where you say what people say will you go there should you go there yet jesus said whether it is north or south whether it is east or west go preach the gospel to every creature and then he tells us in verse 16 it says he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he that believeth not there may be people you are preaching to that believe not that's not our judgment it's in the hand of God it's in the hand of the people we're not to say but I went and all of them did not accept no problem just do what the Lord has called you to do he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and but he that believeth not shall be damned we're looking at Acts chapter 16 verse 9 Acts chapter 16 verse 9 and a vision appeared to Paul in the night and this church, a man of uh, Macedonia, and prayed and pleaded and asked, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And then in verse 10, it says, After he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go. We endeavored to go after he had seen the vision. The people who tell us they see vision, but they never go. 
Your people tell us God speaks to them, but they never go. The greatest thing God can speak to you is that there's a sinner there, go to him. There's a sinner over there, go over there. He must sit in there, go and help them and preach the gospel. That's the greatest message heaven can give you. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavor to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel for to preach the gospel we go because we have the gospel we go because we intend to preach the gospel we go because we're committed to preaching the gospel if you go and you must go it is because you have the gospel you share the gospel you declare the gospel and you project the gospel and you penetrate the hearts of the people with the gospel let's look at number two number two stand lifting up the standard of god stand stand sometimes uh, the news you hear if you put more weight, more value to that news, more than the message of Christ, your knees will be weak, your feet will be trembling, and your heart will be pumping blood irregular because you put more value on the news you are hearing here, the news you are hearing there, and you are not hearing from heaven but when you hear from heaven you will stand your feet will be strong your mind will be strong and your gaze everything you think about your thought your mind strong and you will have the standard gospel standard gospel standard word of god what's the standard gospel the gospel that talks of repentance that's the standard gospel the gospel that talks about salvation about faith in christ that's the standard gospel and the gospel that looks at calvary and tells the people look and live that christ died for you that is the standard gospel any gospel that doesn't have repentance any gospel that does not have faith in christ any gospel that just glosses over the sins of the people that's not, not standard that one is sober standard but the standard gospel the gospel of god is what we take to them and you stand and when you're declaring that, that gospel you look at the faces of the people you are talking to and you say that as somebody standing or standing erect and standing firm and standing courageous and standing convincingly that this is the standard of the gospel of the Lord in Ephesians chapter 6 reading from verse 14 it says stand therefore stand therefore because the lord has sent you stand therefore because his watch is with power stand therefore because that watch will not fail stand therefore having your loins girt with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness the righteous is as bold as a lion you're going to declare the truth you must be righteous you must be upright you must be holy your thoughts your mind your heart your disposition everything must be righteous and holy if you're not righteous the devil will point at something and say uh-huh you want to preach righteousness go ahead but you are righteous yourself that's all right you want to preach the people should come to christ but you are not always united with christ you are disengaged from christ your life is not fully totally committed unto the Lord but when the righteousness of Christ is there there is the imputed righteousness imparted righteousness and the and the righteousness that is practical when that righteousness is there and you have the breastplate of righteousness you'll be able to stand 
therefore because you have on the breastplate of righteousness in verse 15 in verse 15 and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace it tells us in um, philippians chapter 1 verse 27 philippians chapter 1 reading from verse 27 it says only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of christ you're preaching you're declaring the gospel you're teaching the gospel you're bringing people out of their sin into salvation to the savior your conversation your manner of life not only when you are going to preach but every time in your life your past history your past record and then the immediate past where you are living as you are living in your home in your community anytime everywhere let your manner of life let your conduct let your character be as it becomes the gospel of Christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent I may hear of your affairs of your lifestyle of your relationships of your interactions of your private life of your public life I may hear of your affairs that she stand fast you see that stand fast in one spirit in one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel and then in verse 28 in verse 28 and in nothing be terrified by your adversaries you know the persecutors in nothing you know they might come with a new approach persecuting wanting to harass your life now if you are harassed discouraged terrorized terrified and weakened you cannot stand and you cannot declare the gospel fully and freely you cannot declare the gospel with all your heart and with all your mind and with everything the lord has given you therefore in nothing terrified by your adversaries which is to them an evident token of perdition but to you of salvation and of God. Number three here is to speak. Speak leading all to the salvation of God. Speak. Open your mouth and speak. What you're speaking, let the people you're speaking to hear what you're saying. What you're speaking, speak with confidence. Speak with courage. Speak with assurance. You know, body language means a lot when you're speaking. If you're speaking and looking down and you're afraid to look at the people you're talking to, if you're speaking and then you also have another thought at the back of your mind. If you're speaking and doubting, if you're speaking and trembling, if you're speaking and you are not sure, if you're speaking and you don't have the experience you are talking about yourself, it will show. But when you have salvation and when you know how you got that salvation and you know you got it by the standard gospel, you repented, you have faith in the Lord and now what you've got, if not you are giving unto them, you speak with that assurance and the people will have conviction that what you are saying is the truth. The Lord help every one of us in Jesus' name. We're looking at Titus chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 11. It says in uh, chapter 2 of Titus, chapter 2 of Titus, reading from verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Oh, you say, no, I don't think it has appeared unto all men. I know one of my neighbors that have never heard of salvation. That's because you having that salvation have not appeared before them. 
I know one of my relatives that have never heard of real salvation being born again. That's because you having that salvation, you have not come out of your chamber to appear before them. When the people having salvation, when they go everywhere and they appear before all people, all people in the north, all people in the south, all people in the east, all people in the west, all people in your country, all people outside your country, when the people having salvation, when they know that salvation is for everyone and they live where they are and they appear before all men, that grace will appear to them, that salvation will appear to them. But for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Verse 12, it says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live soberly. That's what we do follow up. When the people are giving their hearts to the Lord, and when the people have repented, and when the people have put their faith and their trust and their confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to show them that they will live soberly, that the grace of God that came to them will not be in vain, but they'll live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world many of those converts depending on their background they might have thought because that's what people taught them that nobody can be godly in this present world nobody can be righteous in this present world and nobody can live a sober temperate self-control line in this present world they have been taught that nobody can overcome all the desires of the flesh and the promptings of the flesh and the pleasures of the flesh that nobody can overcome the pull to go into the things of the world that's why we do follow up that now we'll show them the grace of God, the mercy of God had forgiven the past. That same grace and that same mercy sets them free from all the yoke of sinning. And now the grace of God teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world. Then in verse 13 it says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. And then in verse 15, this thing speak go stand speak this thing speak speak the gospel and speak of the salvation of the lord these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority when we speak the word of god that word of god becomes our authority if we come with personal opinion, we have no authority. We cannot speak with assurance. We cannot speak with confidence. I think that's personal opinion. I feel that's personal. I say that's personal opinion. When you're speaking your own word, your own mind, your own feeling, your own idea, your own opinion, you cannot speak with authority. When you are saying something that has no root in the gospel, that cannot take people. To heaven you cannot speak with authority if you act in any authority at all when you are talking about your personal opinion that authority is a kind of authority that is human it doesn't have any heavenly backing but when you go with the gospel when you stand with the standard of heaven, when you speak the salvation that heaven brings to man, then you can speak with all authority. No man, let no man despise thee. Now we're coming to number two. Point number two here, 
they are courageous coordination with addiction to harvesting the only work the lord had given them understanding work the lord had given them all those apostles all the disciples all the believers is the work of preaching the gospel and all of them isn't it wonderful that all the apostles were courageous together and there was a courageous coordination with addiction to harvesting let's come back to acts of the apostles uh, chapter two, chapter 5 and i'm reading from verse 28 uh, acts chapter 5 uh, verse 28 and saying did not we strictly command you that ye should not teach in in this name and behold ye have filled jerusalem ye all of them together they had filled jerusalem with the doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us now can you what you imagine what you look at look at your bible there verse 21 they heard, they heard, they heard everyone. And then, number two, there, they entered, all of them. Now, you know, no, somebody is not uh, staying behind. Uh, this persecution got me. This uh, slander got me. And this criticism got me. This arrow of a word got me. You can go. I cannot go now. I need to nurse my wound. No, all of them, all of them got up and they entered the temple. Look at your Bible there in verse 21. And they taught all of them. They taught this one has congregation there, that one out there, that one out there, and they all taught. And then in verse 22 to verse 23, when they found them not, when they went to the prison to search for the all of them had gone, all of them busy all of them occupied in the work the lord had called them to number five the men are teaching the people all the men all those apostles every one of them they were teaching and then number six there they search them before them that's those leaders and asked them verse 27 and in verse 29 we ought to be God rather than men. The point is, all of them together, their courageous coordination to have their souls, none of them lagged behind. Look at our church. Whenever we're going out for evangelism, and there are some people staying behind and they take that time as free time, and they take that time as playing time, and they take that time as relaxing time. The believers in the Acts of the Apostles in the early church, they didn't do that. All of them together were courageously coordinating themselves because they were all addicted to harvesting. Look at three things we're looking at here. Number one, collective obedience in one accord for harvesting collective obedience number two conscientiously occupied in one assignment without hesitation number three converting outcome with one affection for heaven with one attention for heaven having one attitude and one drive towards heaven converting outcome with one affection for heaven look at number one number one collective obedience in one accord for harvesting we're looking at uh, acts chapter 5 verse 21 it says and when they heard that that is when they heard the word of the angel go stand and speak when they heard that they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught if there were no people there they couldn't teach anybody but all those people in the city all those people in the community they came they were sinners, but they came. 
They had not heard the gospel, yet they came. They had not come into life eternal, yet they came early in the morning. They left their businesses, they left their markets, they left everything and they came to the temple sinners and then when the apostles got there they could see people to teach now if sinners will come early in the morning to the temple hey but we believers today do you as a believer take the word of the lord the gospel of the lord the salvation of the lord and the message of heaven that heaven has sent to us do you take it so seriously that if you are to come to the temple early in the morning that you'll come well that's what he did at that time and i pray that their example will not be a judgment for us on the final day in jesus name it says but the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. Even the persecutors early in the morning, that was their job. That was their work. And they were so serious about that work that those persecutors came together as a council. Can you do that as a church? Your leaders, you have assignment for the kingdom of God and for heaven. And early in the morning, you come up or you say, uh -uh. early in the morning, that's not the best time to give to God. I need to give the best time I have to my work. I need to give the best time I have to my business. And then when I've given the first choice and my great strength, when I can con concentrate, when I've given that to my job, then in the evening when I'm kind of worn out and weary, now talk about the work of God, now we can come, now we can come. So we're not even come at that time. If the persecutors came early in the morning, if the sinners came early in the morning, the apostles beat them to eat and they came early in the morning is telling us that if these people of the world can walk in the morning at noon at night every time and they can be committed to give the best to what they have to whatever they were doing whether it is going to the temple or it is persecuting believers if they give the best of their time we who are christians we need to give the best of our time look at verse 25 in verse 25 then came one and told them saying behold the men whom ye put in prison are standing they are standing they are standing in the temple teaching the people teaching the people acts chapter 8 reading from verse 4 in acts chapter 8 verse 4 therefore they that went they that was scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word they that was scattered abroad since you changed accommodation have you preached the gospel in that place where you are newly settled and whenever you go out of your normal community and residence do you preach the gospel to those who have never heard we're not talking of only speaking to those who have always heard they heard on sunday they heard on monday they heard on tuesday they heard on thursday they heard on saturday and then and you are you know speaking to them the same thing they have heard those who have never heard the gospel, those who are not born again, those whose names are not written in the book of life in heaven, do you speak the gospel to them? Do you count it a responsibility in the bus, at the train station, in the train, in the taxi, anywhere you find yourself, share the gospel, speak the gospel and tell the people 
the way to life eternal and therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word those early christians had no time to gossip they had no time to backbite they had no time to speak of anybody they had no time to speak of politics but everywhere they went they were preaching the word of god let's look at number two here number two conscientiously occupied in one assignment without hesitation without hesitation without pulling back without saying i think about it without saying i can't do it now i'll do it later without saying market is moving now this not the this not the time to obey christ i must obey my business principles but these people that christ has said to occupy till i come conscientiously they were occupied in that one assignment without hesitation look at acts chapter 5 verse 28 saying did we not strictly straightly charge you command you that ye should not speak teach in this name and behold thou hast filled jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us hold on you know what they said when Pilate said, I find no fault in him, therefore he would have released him. And they said, not only they said, they shouted, they cried aloud. They said, crucify him and his blood be upon us. Now, they want to wriggle out of that. They had said what they could not bear. You see people, when they want to do their evil thing, they say, let heaven fall. When heaven falls, they'll not be able to bear that heaven falling upon them. They said, let come what may. When that thing comes, the judgment, they'll not be able to bear. Now they have said, his blood be upon us, thoughtless people thoughtless sinners now they are saying you intend to bring this man's blood upon us if those uh, hardened sinners now were afraid and could not bear what they are spoken out let's be very careful when you're doing something that you shouldn't do as a believer when you are going somewhere you, sh you, sh you shouldn't go as a person who has been touched the word of god when you are adamant and hard-hearted and you want to do something and somebody says my brother my sister you know the consequence of this let come what may when that thing comes you'll not be able to bear it live in a way that you don't have to subject yourself to the judgment of god they said you fill jerusalem with your doctrine and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us look at verse 29 then peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to be god rather than men look at that sentence we ought to be god rather than men actually the root of all persecution the reason for all persecution is that the persecutors are playing god they want to be god they want to relegate god to the background they say obey us disobey god then we will not persecute you the basis of persecution anybody persecuting any other person is that those persecutors are setting themselves up higher than god if you obey us and you forget what christ said no problem no persecution 
If you listen to us and you bend and you bow and you forget God and say, God, I'm sorry, these people have come with a higher power, higher potency, and they come with higher pressure. I cannot obey you. I have to obey them. I have to obey them higher rather than God. There will be no persecution. And that's what the persecutors want. Check up. If you are persecuting anyone, if you are pressing anyone, why? Because they said no to you and they said yes to God. Because they said no, you will not be my God. God will be my God anywhere the persecution comes from. Those persecutors want to be God. They want to be the higher power and they want to have the higher voice. And when you say, I'm sorry, if I do that and make you God, I'll miss heaven. And when that time comes, you'll not have any power to get me to heaven. So whatever you want to do, whatever you want to add, I'm going to be God who can either allow me to enter heaven or deny me from entering heaven and obey him. Then persecution will come. But understand, the persecution is for only a few years, only for a few months, only for a few days, only for a few moments but you say i'll obey god let come what me i'll obey god and i'll keep on obeying god then whether persecution stops or not doesn't matter god whom you obey will give you strength to bear the persecution in jesus name can i say something to your families allow me please uh, you know sometimes the husband wants to consecrate and the husband has heard from God, I'm going to be a missionary, I'm going to be an evangelist, I'm going to be a pastor, I'm going to give all my time on my life to the work of God. And maybe it's the wife that will say, I don't think you should do that, my husband. I think you should be winning bread and doing this and doing that. Well, now, who will be God? Is it the God of heaven or the wife who wants to play God and when maybe the wife does not have her way and the man says I'm still going to do it anyway then the one the wife that wants to play God will persecute the man don't worry if she plays God understand she's not God she will be a goddess but not God God, the God of heaven, is still the one you will obey. It might be the wife that says, I want to live right. This thing, my husband, you've been telling me to do, I don't think it's right. Look at this scripture. Look at what God has said. And then the husband may say, no, I'm your husband. I'm the head of the home. And he wants to play God. You should know who your God is. And as a wife, as a believer, as a candidate for heaven, pilgrim to heaven, you say, I'm not going to allow this man to play God. I am going to obey God rather than man. That's the reason for the persecution. If you always say yes, yes to everybody, there'll be no persecution. If they say don't serve God, yes. If they say don't consecrate, yes. If they say don't make restitution, yes. If they say don't go that far, yes. If you always say yes, there'll be no persecution. But you need to understand, whoever you yield yourself to, whoever you bench to, that persecution, you elevate him to be your God then you've lost God and God has lost you it may be in a local church there's a pastor there in that local church and he knows the word of God he knows the calling of God he says this is what to stand for and uh, you know some members in that church might say this man doesn't understand we are the gods are the goddesses here and the only reason why they persecute that 
pastor is because he takes God as God and he does not allow them any of those people there to play God and because he doesn't give them the promotion of becoming his God and then he relegates the real God of heaven to the background those gods and goddesses may persecute him if you keep on standing, that will show the people that you know who your God is. The apostles kept on standing and they didn't allow those Pharisees and Sadducees and those persecutors to become their God or to play God. And they said, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to your mother men judge ye we ought to obey God rather than men I pray God will help all of us in Jesus name look at verse 42 in verse 42 and daily in the temple that's what the persecutors didn't want and daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. They didn't stop, you will not stop. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at converting outcome with one affection for heaven. The outcome of all the obedience to God, the outcome of their subjection to God and their commitment to God is that souls were converted. It tells us in Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 19, repent ye therefore and be converted. That's the bottom line, that's the outcome, that's the goal of their ministry. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And we're told in verse 26, it says in verse 26, don't tell you first, God having raised up his son. Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Conversion, that's the outcome and that's the goal of the ministry of the preaching. Acts chapter 15 verse 3. In Acts chapter 15 verse 3, I'm being brought on their way by the church they passed through Phoenicia uh, and uh, Phoenicia and Samaria declaring the conversion of the Gentiles the conversion of the Gentiles and they caused great joy unto all the brethren point number three now in point number three we have the constant commitment of the apostles of holiness the constant commitment constantly they were committed courageously they were committed conscientiously they were committed to the work of the lord if they didn't do that they will not be holy understand i don't smoke i don't drink i don't womanize I don't manize, I don't do whatever. If we do not obey the commandment of the Lord and the commission that Christ has given to us, we are not holy. If we cannot drop our excuses, if we cannot drop our conveniences, if we cannot drop everything we are uh, running away from, and whatever you might uh, say, I don't do this, I don't do this, I dress like this, I don't dress like that, it's total obedience to all the commandments of God that spells holiness in our lives. But these apostles, they had constant commitment of the apostles of holiness we're coming now to uh, acts chapter 5 reading from verse 29 in verse 29 it says then peter and the other apostles answered and said they didn't push peter forward 
Peter, you are the one that can brave it. You are the one that can, you know, confront it. these people. No, they didn't push him forward. All of them were together in this. Were together in obedience to the Great Commission. Were together in putting our necks to the yoke that Christ has given unto us. Take my yoke upon you. And it says Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We all of us ought to be God rather than men. In verse 30, it says, In verse 30, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. In verse 31, him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Verse 32 says, and we are his witnesses of, of these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him. They actually obeyed him. We're looking at verse 40. In verse 40, it says unto him, to Gamaliel, they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beating them, and beating them, you can tell these were unbelievers, these were persecutors, they didn't beat them. Gently, I say, they told me to beat you, but I don't want to beat you. And so I'm going to act. I say, no, they really beat them. They had the animosity and the hatred and the anger in their hearts. And they said, well, teach you, let's say, we told you, make us God. And don't uh, listen to the God of heaven. We charge you, disobey God and obey us. And you didn't do that with that anger, with that that hatred and with that hardness of heart, they beat them and they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and they let them go. Then in verse 41, in verse 41, and they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing, not regretting. They didn't regret had I known. Look at what I've got myself into now. And look at all that I'm suffering now. Me and, you know, older person, Peter, having wife and having a wife's mother, the mother-in-law, a man of business, left everything and came to preach in the gospel. Look at what I've subjected myself to. They did not regret. They were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name in verse 42 the beating could not stop them the persecution could not stop them the harassment could not stop them and daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Let's look at three things here before we pray. Number one, it talks about the restrictive contrary command of men. Restrictive contrary command of men. Number two, the resilient, courageous commitment to the ministry. And number three, the reinvigorating, re-energizing, re-empowering, reviving comforters, companionship with the ministers. Number one, number one is the restrictive contradictory command of men contradictory commands of men in Acts chapter 4 reading from verse 18 Acts chapter 4 verse 18 and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus they commanded them and they said you must not speak at all at all anywhere anytime no teach in the name of jesus has god commanded us anything in our church here as preachers as pastors as proclaimers of the truth has god given us the truth 
the whole truth and he has said this is what to preach and that there are people that are bullying us are there people that are confronting us are there people that are threatening us and saying don't go that way don't speak that don't talk of repentance don't talk of restitution don't talk of sanctification don't speak on holiness don't speak on one man one wife until death do us part and there are people that frown at us and they say now you're a pastor you're a preacher you don't have right to preach everything god has given you to preach we decide the syllabus the curriculum and the doctrine and the things will allow you to preach if you go that way first time will say it's a mistake if you go that way again and you mention that thing again it's no more a mistake will descend on you those are the pharisees and the sadducees and the sanhedrin and the priests and they are not going to heaven so they don't want other people to go to heaven and so they called them and they commanded them and they said have we not told you not to teach at all not to speak at all in the name of jesus look at verse 19 verse 19 but peter and john answered and said now john was a soft-spoken person but not a coward john was a loving lovely person but not a coward john was an, like an easygoing person a quiet apostle but he was not a coward he was as bold as peter you might have a gentle nature a gentle disposition but you must still have a courageous heart a lion at heart you must still be able to identify with peter because peter and john answered and said unto them whether it be right in the sight of god to hearken unto you more than unto god judge you can decide whatever you want to decide look at verse 20 for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. I pray God will give every one of us without exception that same courage in Jesus' name. If those people with only their human spirit were that bold, then we will have the Holy Spirit was be, who should be even more bold than they are. And if they try to stop us with their human spirit, the Holy Spirit will help us to continue obeying the Lord in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two. Number two here is the resilient, courageous commitment to the ministry. Resilient. That means you have the staying power, the standing power. Here is the commandment of the Lord, and I'm a child of God, and I'm a worker in the vineyard, and I'm a minister of the gospel. We have that resilient courage and commitment in the ministry. Acts chapter 5 verse 29 in acts chapter 5 verse 29 then peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to we have to we must this is incumbent upon us this must be done whatever the opposition whatever the contradiction whatever the persecution we ought to be god rather than men amen it will as i said it will come up in your life there are people who want to control your life what you drink what you don't drink you must drink this god 
doesn't want me to drink that but we want you to drink it and this you are not social you are not uh, socializing i will not you must you don't fit into a society if you don't drink this we ought to be god rather than men this is what a kind of crushes our young people when you go to college and they find other college students and some drinking and smoking their marijuana and they call them be a boy be a guy be strong and be focused and we tell you here if you're going to fit in here you must smoke this no i cannot smoke that i am a christian and god is the controller and the director of my life those little little boys or girls they want to play god you must smoke this one if you don't will make life hard for you we determine your life and we determine where you go and where you don't go if that our own son our own daughter makes the god of heaven her god and he tramples on the feet all these who want to be god over his life her life she will maintain her ground he will maintain his ground i will not when you go to the place of work where they bribe where they do all those things and then you say i'm a christian i don't do that some people will come with boldness and they'll say this one you will do this is the pattern here this is the practice here everybody knows that when you come to the office you leave church behind on sunday and when you come during the week and you're walking here this you must do well if that so-called believer makes those people his god and exalts them above the god of heaven he will succumb he will yield he will surrender and do whatever they are asking but he will lose god and god will lose him he will lose heaven heaven will lose him but if he says i serve the god of heaven whatever people say whatever people want to compel me to do here is where i stand it shows that he exalts the god of heaven if you join any area of work anywhere and then the people say now here in this confine they make it like a cult in their cult in that place of work this is what they do and you say but that's hypocrisy but that's not acting right but that doesn't feed into holiness of life uh -uh, don't preach we tell you that in this their confinement in this their cult this is what they do if you succumb you make that group that gang that cult, that company, you make that your God. But if you say, I'm going to obey God. I came in here with God. I came in here with grace. I came in here with godliness because I want to go to heaven. When I leave this place, I still want to get to heaven. All hypocrisy and all hide out. I don't want to be part of that. You may be persecuted because they frown and they are angry. You are not making them God. You are exalting the God of heaven. Leave that between them and the God of heaven. But for you, if you make the God of heaven your God, you have to say with Peter and the rest of the apostles, you have to say we ought to be God rather than men. You will eat. In Jesus name we're coming to point number three here point number three is reinvigorating comforters companionship with the ministers that is the comforter the Holy Spirit that re-energizes us and re-empowers us and revives us he becomes totally resident in you and you hear him more than you hear the persecutors and what the angel came from heaven to say go 
stand and speak the words of this life to all the people, he comes to energize you. He says in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, reading from verse 32, and we are his witnesses. Not that we were. We try to witness for him in chapter 2, in chapter 3, in chapter 4, and then that load the heavy burden of persecution came on us, we were, no. In spite of the persecutions, they still at this time are, we are his witnesses. There were people that confronted them, that opposed them, that persecuted them, that said, no, 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 you cannot. We are his witnesses. There were contradictors and there were conf the people that confronted us and they blocked our way and said, you will not go, you will not pass. We are his witnesses in your life as a believer. Whatever water has gone under the bridge and whatever names people have called you and whatever slander and whatever pungent thing, piercing thing they have said against you, you make up your mind, this is what I committed my life to. This is what I consecrated my life to and this is the commitment I made. I laid everything on the altar and what Whatever happens and whatever has happened, we are his witnesses of these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him. We are obeying him. And so he fulfills his promise. I will send the Holy Ghost upon you. And because after he sent the Holy Ghost upon us, we didn't use the power, the skill, the vision, the spirit of that Holy Ghost. We didn't use that for any other thing. We kept on doing what he has called us to do. And we are still his witnesses. And he keeps on giving us more power, more strength, more skill, and more vision, and more energy, and more vitality of the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. If you stop obeying God in your life, it will not keep on giving you all the strength, all the power, all the skill, all the anointing, all the unction of the Holy Ghost, but as you keep on obeying him, obeying him, not obeying man, obeying him, not obeying persecutors, obeying him, not obeying the people that put pressure upon your life, obeying him, not obeying the people in the marketplace, on the street, in the community, or rather have you, uh, you know, dead and uh, stop everything concerning the gospel, but you keep on obeying him, He'll keep on giving you more and more and more of the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord saturates your life. The Lord fill your life with more of the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, here we are. Here we are. You've shown us great things out of your word and we pray that you grant us the power, the unction, the enablement, and the skill, and the, and the penetration of the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. What have you heard today? What have you learned today? Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Transfer, translate all these into my heart. Translate, transfer all these into my spirit. That he'll give you the power of ceaselessly preaching the gospel. Despite ceaseless persecution, let him hear you pray. You've had a lot. Are there Pharisees, Sadducees, compelling you, commanding you? 
not to preach, not to pray, not to do the will of God, not to obey the commandment of your God. The Lord has released you so that you go, you stand, you speak all the words of this life. Go with energy. Go with readiness, willingness. Go with passion. With zeal, go with focus, not thinking of any other thing, but exalting the commission of Christ in your life. Go for the gospel, the gospel of salvation, let it reflect in your life. You are liberated to liberate souls. Retain your own liberation. When you go to others, then you can speak with confidence, assurance. Because you know you're fully liberated. And the same power of the gospel that liberated you can liberate other souls too. Liberate them from sin. Liberate them from their chains and shackles. Go. And when you go, when you get there, stand. You go there for a purpose. Fulfill that purpose. Lay everything on the altar once again. Stand like you stood in days gone by. Do you remember in the past our family members didn't want you to stand for the standard of the gospel? Are you stood? Stand once again. If you didn't stand at that time, you'll not be here today. They blamed you. They persecuted you. Maybe they beat you. They denied you. They made jest of you. They publicly ridiculed you, but you stood. Stand again. Stand to proclaim. Stand to preach. Stand and persevere. Don't cut corners. Don't compromise. Don't pretend. Be who you are. In the presence of the council, In the presence of persecutors, don't run away, stand. 
Don't hide. Stand. Don't hide your conviction. If the leaders that went before us hid their, con their conviction, like Martin Luther, will not have the Protestant church. If John Wesley hid, went undercover, stopped, will not have the standard he maintained. Stand. If the devil energizes the persecutors, let the God of heaven energize those who are called to stand for the truth. Speak. Don't lose your voice to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees. Don't lose your backbone to the persecutors. Speak and the Holy Spirit is nudging you Stand up and speak in the bus, on the streets, with a morning cry, proclaiming the gospel. Do it. Speak with the salvation message, leading the people, the souls that hear you to salvation. Have you found a brother going astray? A sister going astray? And the Lord has shown you that clear. Go to her. Go to him. Stand. With love, stand. With good, convincing language, stand. That man is forgetting his salvation and is behaving now as if he never heard the gospel of salvation. Go to him, stand. Don't look down. Rescue him from total backsliding. Go, stand, and speak. Don't let their facial appearance, their body language, shut your mouth. Stand, speak. And speak the word of the Lord. Be obedient to the call of harvesting. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. What last did you do that? Speak, preach, to those who have not heard. Don't allow anyone you are conversant with not to hear the gospel. Don't concentrate on other matters, non-essentials, on important issues, affairs of life, not allow that to take your time, take your breath, occupy your life. 
obey the words of the Great Commission. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Don't lose any opportunity of preaching the gospel in every conversation. Find a way to make the gospel of Jesus Christ the high point of your discussion, of your sharing. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from the grave. Let them not die a sinner's death. Occupy till I come. It's giving you the talents, occupy till I come. It's giving you the message, occupy till I come. And make their conversion your goal, your desire, your purpose, the outcome of your sharing with them. And when they are converted, their lives will turn around. They become new creatures in Christ. Any man in Christ, your convert. Any woman in Christ, your convert. You'll be a new creature. Old things will pass away. All things will become new. Don't listen to those who compel, command you not to speak at all in this name. Don't be a slave of mortal man. Don't be a slave of the bully. Don't be a slave of the man, the woman, also shout you down. Don't be a slave of an angry Nebuchadnezzar. Don't be a slave of an angry Jezebel that will take your heart away then you'll forget why you're here on life in life you'll forget the calling the Lord has given you be a man be a woman be a believer standing courageously and firmly in the word of God. Have resilient courage. And let the Holy Ghost energize you once again. Invigorate you once again. Empower you afresh. And live for the ministry of saving souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word. You have sent to us. Thank you for those early apostles. 
you are courageous you are committed you are consecrated to this one thing you have given them to do they've done their part they have gone and you have brought us in to the kingdom at this time we're asking lord that they like they were faithful to the very end make every one of us faithful and firm standing in jesus name Amen. the courage the commitment the consecration we need to face the great commission and do what you've called us to do every day Every moment we pray, you grant everyone the resilient courage in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be committed to the great commission. And Lord, we we'll pray the word of salvation will never leave our mouth when we come before unbelievers in Jesus' name. Amen. When they come to us, help us to preach your word that will lead them to salvation. When we go to them, help us standing firmly on your word to preach the word that will lead them to salvation in Jesus' name. And we pray we remain holy while we're preparing other people in the harvest for holiness and for heaven in jesus name we we'll pray will not allow anyone to hinder us from obeying the great commission we also pray we will not make ourselves to hinder anyone who is doing your work and calling people into the great commission to the kingdom to get to heaven in jesus name Help us to be an encouragement to other people as they're moving on to do what we cannot do and then to follow after them that the same grace you have given them, you give unto us to preach the gospel to every creature in Jesus' name. Anywhere we are, anywhere they are, we pray that the principle, the practice, the performance of going and standing and speaking will never leave us in Jesus' name. And your word in our mouth will bear fruit. Your word in our mouth will turn sinners to salvation. Your word in our mouth will direct people in the way of heaven in Jesus' name. And as we follow up the converts, and lead them to the principles they ought to know so that they too will become converts that are matured that will go that will stand that will speak as we do that we pray lord will never be tired in jesus name help us not to allow any hindrance any hypocrisy anything to stand in our way that till Christ comes, we'll keep on doing, we'll keep on obeying, we'll keep on evangelizing, we'll keep on raising up people that will be at your heart what you want them to be in Jesus' name. The power, the strength, the skill, the ability to go to stand to speak preaching ceaselessly despite unceasing persecution your grant to everyone in Jesus name thank you Lord we know you have answered we pray the answer will be reflected in every one of our lives in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.